All right, come on in, get you some coffee. What do you think? You got good stuff there? All good stuff? Yeah, there's some good stuff over there. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Yes. Okay. I actually took... watching us. Okay, people, we got to get started. I'll get y'all warmed up if I can remember what I was going to do. Have any of y'all had trouble with uh, the new the new cable sy system we have, Optimum? You know what what did it, what was it? 
Yeah, who hasn't? Sudden Link was it was Sudden Link. And they changed the name every time when they get. I think it's one million complaints. You, they change the name, so <laughs> they go back to zero. They go back to zero after that. But uh, you know how the optimum repair man is now. He was outside my house the other day helping the neighbor, and he saw me. He said, "Hey, can you tell me what time it is?" And I looked at my watch and I said, "Yeah, it's sometime between eight and one." He didn't laugh. He did not laugh. Uh, as you're getting your coffee and things, we got lots of visitors and new people coming back, and it's a good thing. I'll announce those people here in a second. Uh, we have a bunch of things up here at the table for you. We have uh, newsletters for the month that James Vaden is so kind to do for us. Thank you, James. Yeah, James. Whoop, whoop. We have uh, poinsettia thingies you can fill out. I think they're due today, or maybe latest tomorrow. So if you want to buy a poinsettia that goes in the church, and then afterwards, after Christmas, after Christmas Eve service, you pick those up and take them home with you. So you bless the church and yourself with those. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we have a list of affiliate roster that people that are in nursing homes, uh, at, stuck at home, uh, we have those addresses if you want those, and we have the regular rosters of everybody in here and their addresses and phone numbers and all that neat stuff. So if you all want to uh, grab one of those later, you may. One thing we're going to start doing right now is ha handing out these Fifth Tuesday. Fifth Tuesday, we do the food pantry at, Kathy what's it called? Throws bags in your yard. And <laughs> Kathy throws bags in my yard for the food pantry. And I pick them up. I usually get real mad, and then, who threw those in my yard? And then I realize Kathy. I don't do it without permission. Pass it on, keep that on this section. That's right. She doesn't do it without permission. So uh, we uh, volunteer to serve food at the food pantry every time there is a fifth Tuesday in a month. So we get about 20 of this class together and donate our time on a Tuesday. We do that, and then we go to Waterburger. Waterburger. Not water burger. So if you will pass those around, Patrick, one of those. Thank you. And Kurt, if you'll pass those around. Go stays in this section. So everything goes back, doesn't go over, straight back. I'll pick it up or Karen will pick it up later. One of the Karens. One of the Karens will pick it up. We have a lot of Karens in here, Karen. Did you know that? Yeah. What do you think, Karen Thorne? And Karen Rogers? I got, I got too many Karens. All right. What else we got? Uh, okay. I'll, I'll get you started with a little story. One day, a lonely man. <laughs> one day, a lonely man decided he wanted to get a pet. And not just any kind of pet. He wanted a special pet. So he went to the local pet store, and he talked to the owner, and he said, Hey, I want a really unusual pet. And the owner says, Hey, I've got just the pet for you. He says, I have a talking centipede. Ooh, he thought that is unusual. I'll take it. So he buys the, the talking centipede, takes it home. It's a Saturday. Next morning he gets up, he goes, hey, I'm going to invite my friend and pet to go to church with me today. So he says, hey, buddy, you want to go to church with me today? It'll be really fun. There was no answer. So he, he was a little bit bothered by it, but he waited a couple more minutes, and he asked the centipede again. He said, hey, hey, little buddy, would you like to go to church with me? You'll receive a blessing. No answer. So he thought, I'm only going to ask this one more time. He waited a couple more minutes, and uh, he goes up to the box, gets right in the box, and says, hey, do you want to go to church with me today? We'll learn about God. And then a voice comes from the box and it says, I heard you the first two times. He said, I'm putting on my shoes. <laughs> Thank you. Karen, Karen's going to come up here and talk to you about Christmas auction and Christmas tour of homes. This is our big deal for the year fundraiser for local missions so she's gonna lay it on you yeah 
So today, uh, tickets started to be on sale. K uh, Kay and Phyllis are outside. And remember that uh, the auction is 15, the tour is 20, and you get a deal if you buy them before December 2nd. And you get 30, it's $30 for both, so you get $5 off if you buy them early. We're incentivizing people to buy early. Okay, and I wanted to explain a little bit about both of those things because a lot of you are new. So the tour of homes, we have five houses, and if you have a ticket, who has a ticket in here? Do you have tickets that I can look at or hold? Thank you. Okay, awesome. Okay, I'll give them back to you. I can print these myself so I don't have to steal it. Okay. <laughs> So this is the tour of homes, and if you see, we have five houses listed on here, and we have the names of the people whose homes we uh, have been gracious enough to open their homes, decorate them for Christmas, and allow you to go through and see how festive they are. And um, we're, it's from one to four, and the cost is $20. Robert's being Vanna White. Oh, I'm sorry, two to five. I think it's one to four, but we'll do two to five, whatever works. Okay, so two to five, um, yeah, Eastern time, it's one to four. My brain is there. Okay, so the five houses from this class are Teresa and Michael Eddy, Angie and John Baggert, Susan and Roger Dennison, and Dina and Mike Murphy, and then Don Ellen and Richard Jacobs, who are in the choir and are also in Saints Alive, have volunteered to do a home. Uh, so we're gracious and we're trying to expand and include everyone. So I will be sending around a sheet to ask you to make treats that you'll just bring here and we'll send to the home where it's going. And then um, we need some people to help uh, traffic flow inside the house. So if you're willing to serve, it'll be an hour, well, two hours a piece. Um, to serve. So it would be great if you would be willing to do that. I'll send a sheet around next week for you to sign up, and that date is December the 4th. Okay? Anybody have questions about Tour of Homes? Awesome. Oh, Vera. Garden Club is not having tour. No. They are having a silent auction thing or something in the lodge. So we're hoping that people can go and then go visit the lodge and do both. But they're not having it, which is why we uh, said we would do it. All right. The next thing is the Lakeside Christmas Auction. This is the ticket. It's cute. Katie did a really good job on these this year. And so he's going to model again. All right. So here's the thing. We have people in the class graciously gave us funds for a group of ladies to go out and they shopped for various things for um, us to bid on. And so um, there are a few things that are sort of homemade. So um, Regina is making some cookies. So if you know Regina and Christmas cookies, there's some for that, which would be wonderful. But there's a uh, cruise and dinner at the stewards, the stewards do a dinner and then a, take you around the lake, and that's for four. So if you want to either get three other people with you or get two, you know, another couple if there's four of you, uh, think about it and then start bidding on that, okay? Those are usually kind of expensive. That's not a other way to say that. Costly. But so worth it. They're worth it. Yeah. Okay, they're worth it. Uh, yes, it's value, super, super good value. And the other one that does that is Glenn and Linda Mayfield, and you actually have the dinner on the lake. Uh, Robert and I with the Simmons did that this year and had a great time. So um, mm -hmm. go together and bid on that and do that. The, the biggest thing that we do is there is a dinner at our house for 12 and so it's as you can imagine it's a little 
we, we encourage uh, spending. <laughs> Robert cooks, I don't, for those of you who don't know, Robert is a really, really good cook, uh, chef, that's what Darlene always calls him. Uh, I'm the sous chef, I'm only allowed in the kitchen at certain times, and then I help serve. So, uh, and then I help decorate and set up the house for you to come. So be thinking about and getting your group together for that. Um, it's been really fun for us to have different groups come through and we get to know each other better because when you break bread together and sit at a table, it's really fun fellowship as well as good food. So we would love for you to bid on that. So there's 12 people. So you need to get a group together and the more you have, the more you can bid. Oh yes, and there's one more group thing. Uh, Jennifer and Ed Lee, I don't think they're here today, but they have a home in Riadosa, a condo in Riadosa. And so they, it sleeps four to six people. It can sleep six, but it's three bedroom, two bathroom home and there's a loft or bonus room kind of thing there. But it's very nice and it is five days, five days, and they've donated it. So every bit of money that we make on that is missions, missions money. Same thing for Stewart's, Mayfield's, and our home. We don't get any money for that. So um, be thinking about that. It's January through June is the only time it was available because it's one of those like Airbnb kind of things. So, but they've blocked out you to get first choice for uh, a trip to Rio Dosa for five days. So be thinking about that if you'd like to do that, and uh, it would be fun. Does anybody have questions about the auction? Oh yeah, when you buy a ticket, I have, we, Kay and I worked this week on the catalog, so there are pictures of each item and then a starting bid is listed. So you can kind of guess and look through what you might want to bid on. And I encourage you to say, this is the one thing I really want because we've had myself included and Kay where we've picked four or five things and we never get any of it. So I said, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Pick the thing we really want and we know how much money we have to spend. We'll bid on that first, get it, and then if we have money left over, we'll do the others. But um, So it's good for you to circle and kind of think of things that you might want. All right? Catalog. Those are fun. And you don't get a catalog unless you buy a ticket, which is why they are taking names and writing it down. Those will be available starting next Sunday. Yes, Tim. It went to local missions. Okay. Yeah, well, that's all right. That's the point of that. So, um, and we've had some things that people have painted that are in our class. Uh, Judy Dumas painted some, a lovely picture, and uh, Belva painted a lovely picture, and Barbara Foy made a I don't, it's not a full quilt, but it kind of goes on the end of the bed and it says Psalms and it has different Psalms in it. And she made the quilt and donated the quilt. So we have some very talented people who are willing to share their talents. All right, any more questions? No, but yes. One more. Yes? <laughs> That's going to be in the spring. So April? No, no. Nope. We're going to buy tickets in the spring. Yes, in the spring. For all. She asked about Cowboy Evening, and it's going to be in the spring, Dawn, April, Omer. Anybody remember what date we picked? It's the Thursday after Easter, so look at your calendar and figure that out. Because <laughs> I don't remember the day. But we'll get you more information as that comes closer. Okay, that's all. April 13th, April 13th is that. Uh, sorry that we're going long, but we want to get all that stuff in. There's a lot of things we're going on in our class and in our church we want you all to be aware of. Also, 
Thanksgiving Sunday, we're going to be here at Sunday School. We're going to have church service. That's the 27th. Be here. The 28th is Get Happy Singers. If you don't have your tickets yet, Roger says. Yeah, we're about to sell out again. <clears throat> See him today if you need a ticket. They're $35. $35. You get a meal and a great show. And uh, they we sell out for the last time on how many years we sold out. So Programs two weeks from tomorrow. That'd be November 28th. Did <coughs> uh, I say that right? Yeah. You know, fifth Tuesday's November 29th. That's what you're signing up for now. Oh, the choir performance is December 11th. There's two performances on that Sunday, 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock, the Christmas choir program. Oh, my gosh. Treats today. If, those, if Did you get a treat? Oh my gosh. Yes. That's brought to you by Kay Simmons and Betty Kennedy. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Birthdays today, Barbara Foy and Helen Job. Is Helen here? I see you, Helen. Her birthday's the 14th. Is that right, Helen? Is that tomorrow? 14th? Yeah, it is. Happy birthday. Uh, Sharon Curtis and Darlene Young. All right. Uh, the 15th is their birthdays. So wish them happy birthday this week. I think she already had a party. Surprise party, and it's good. Anniversaries, Don and Martha Miller. Anniversary is 11-17, November 17th. So wish them a happy anniversary. Okay, bear with me, people. <coughs> Visitors who have the Likerts are here. Just wave. I'm not going to ask you to t do a speech or anything. John and Paula Likert. Is that correct? Okay, John and Paula Likert. And they, you live on Bay Hills? You live on Bay Hills. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Rick and Dana Boyd are here. And that is, wave. And that is Dallas' sister and brother-in-law. Is that correct? And where y'all from? In Unionville, Indiana. Indiana. How about that? Union Hills? Mills. Union Mills, Indiana. All right, welcome. John and Mary Felter, I saw them earlier. There they are. All right, they're waving at us. They live on Pine View next door to Kay and David Simmons. So welcome them. All right, do I have anybody that I missed? Karen, help me here. Oh, the Turners. I, I had them written down. Uh, Steve and Melanie Turner, and that is Alice Park Hill's daughter. Daughter, daughter, son in law, and they're visiting with us today. Welcome, thank you. We love Alice. We have a new member today, Corey Perry Lopez. Wave at her. She's a, hey, Corey. <clears throat> Welcome, glad to have you. Enjoying that. So, we need to get started, Rupert. So, I'm just going to ask you one question today. Just one. Just one. What did the movie The Sixth Sense and the Titanic have in common? I see dead people. Is it too soon? Is it too soon? You know, the Titanic sunk in 1912, right? I see dead people. I see. I see. I see. Charlie? Yes? No? I don't have a. Well, good morning, church family. How's everybody doing? Thanks. So good to see so many faces. Smiling faces this morning. It's good to see y'all. Hey, they play football yesterday? How'd Texas do? How'd Baylor do, Janet? Bad, bad, bad. How'd your football team do? TCU won. TCU won. We're, we're, hey, 10 and 0, 10 and 0, huh? 10 and 0. Texas Tech won. Yeah. Oklahoma State. Yeah. Kansas State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Penn State? 30 to nothing. Oh, God, don't be rubbing it in. Don't be rubbing it no. Well, I hope your ball team had a good day. It was, uh, do you know that, oh, we're only... Ten days now. You forgot Notre Dame, Rupert. I'm sorry. You forgot Notre Dame. Oh, Notre Dame. They Notre, did they play ball? And Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Notre Dame, yeah. Do you know we're only about ten days to Thanksgiving? Have you already got things laid out? Are you, re are you ready for the holidays? I'm ready for Israel. Woo! Yeah. Oh, you're going to Israel. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
How many, do, do we have, how many people do we have in here going with Nick to, it, okay, all right. Yeah, people. Yeah, Sylvia. The Youngs, Darlene and Mike. Darlene and Mike. Ooh, it's coming up quick. I, wish, I know that's going to be a good trip. We're going to try to do that next year, aren't we, Janet? How are we going to do that, honey? <laughs> How are we going to get that done, huh? Okay, 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 okay. Well, this morning we're, uh, goodness, it's already 10 after 10. I tell you what, we're, uh, we're starting a new, uh, a new series, and I was, I was looking and trying to come up with, because uh, I usually alternate between the Old Testament and then come back to the New Testament, but I just couldn't help but say, well, you know, we, we spent about three or three, four weeks on um, Noah, and uh, we're going to go right into the Exodus. We're going to talk about Moses, and then we're going to do that right up till, uh, we're going to take Moses for probably right up to about the first of December, and then we're going to switch over to Luke, and then we'll be covering different characters of Luke for the Christmas story. So that's from now to the end of the year, James, that's the that's kind of the format, so when you lay your bulletin out, you know, we've got the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Say what? Say what? Say what? But anyway, well, that's, that's kind of the, the plan we're, we're uh, going at, and uh, so we, I don't know how long it's going to take us for Moses, but, but for the Exodus that we're, we're talking about and some of the, the characteristics about it, but uh, there's a whole lot there. There's an awful lot there, and we're going to try to look at it. And uh, I was uh, uh, reading up, trying to get prepared, and uh, there's a whole lot more there than I ever dreamed of. And that, so we'll, we'll take it as slow as we need to. And if um, December rolls around and we need to get into Luke, well, we'll come back after the first of the year and mop it up. But uh, there's no need to get in a real big hurry, or is there? No, no. no. Russ said it was okay, see? I should have been listening to me. Oh, uh, yeah. Listen to Russ. Yeah. Well, um, let's have a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll get started. Precious Father, thank you for this day, and Father, thank you for the, the countless blessings, Father, that you bestow on us. And Father, thank you for uh, life itself, and we just uh, come praising your name. Father, be with us through the day. Help us in everything we do and say that we glorify you, and be with us. In your precious name we pray, amen. Well, Moses is, um, now let's not talk about Moses, let's, let's talk about the Israelites. They're over in bondage over in, in Egypt, and they've been there for, can you imagine, 400 years. 400 years since the patriarchs, and since they got into Mo, into. Uh, Egypt and the Israelites are down in Egypt. Can you remember from your past history what what are they doing in Egypt? Yeah, you remember they ran away. There was a great famine in the in the land of Israel, and they they left, and so they ended up down there with Jacob and all of his descendants and everything. Seventy of them, seventy descendants, and they were in Egypt trying to make out an existence, a living there. And because Joseph had paved the way for them to go as a family unit, and he was uh, second in command right behind the king, uh, and he was, and the, the family, right, and, and Jacob and Joseph, they were well known and appreciated for all the work that they had done. But a lot of water can run under the bridge in 400 years. You remember your, you know your ancestors, Patrick was so good 400 years ago, but 400 years, we've kind of forgotten about them, haven't we? And that's the way the Egyptians were. 400 years had passed by, and they, they didn't recognize Joseph. They didn't recognize any of the things that Jacob had done. Things were status quo and they were living the way that they they thought they intended to and meanwhile the israelites have got to the point where they now some numbers are they outnumber the egyptians 
the Israelites, the Israelites are growing and growing and growing. And it's estimated that some five to 600,000 men are there. And they, with, between all the wives and the kids and everything, that they really, so the Egyptians say, you know, if there was a war that broke out any place close to us, and we've got them under bondage and we've got them as slaves here in Egypt, if something was to break out, you know what they would do? They would join the other forces and be against us. Yeah. So we've got to be able to control them, and the only way to control them is to treat them truly like slaves. And so they will put taskmasters over them, and they will order them what to do. And they will be in the building of different cities in Egypt, and they will build the city of Pithom and Ramsey, and they will, they will accomplish so many things, but it's all under slave labor. And they have a special task there where they, they make bricks. They make bricks and at that day and time you had to mortar and you got to put the straw in there. Well, the Egyptians were nice enough to go get the straw and bring it up there, but you had to mix the mortar and the straw together and you would make form these bricks. And all the animals that needed tending the Israelites will do that. And any of the farming duties that need to be done, the Israelites will do that. And so they have set a dynasty up on slave labor. And they keep them well under control. And that's the, uh, the setting from the first chapter of Exodus. They are under control and things are to the point where we monitor their existence. So they've got midwives that, that help deliver the babies, but the midwives thank the Lord. They were, they feared the Lord, and they would deliver the babies. But the rule that the Egyptians had set up is that if there's a girl baby born, she can live. But if there's a male baby born, he's to be killed on the spot. And the midwives didn't, didn't obey, and they kept having babies and kids and kids, and the population got bigger and larger and larger. So the rule at the end of the first chapter is that any boy baby born Anyone, automatically thrown into the Nile River. We're not going to tolerate this any longer. The Jews are getting out of hand. The Hebrews are outnumbering us, and it's harder for us to control them. Well, there was a young couple that had a baby. Her name was Jochamed. Jochamed. His name was Amron, Am Amnon. And they had a baby, and they already had two other kids. And had a little girl, she was about six years old, best I can figure. And they had another boy who was about three, toddler kids. You remember those days when we had kids like that? Those were. <laughs> how did we get, how did we do it? How did we get through? And my, oh my, she was pregnant again, and she delivered a new baby, bouncing boy. So they decided they'd try to keep that baby hid so that they didn't, so the government wouldn't end up throwing that baby into the Nile River. So they took a basket of pitch and tar and they, you remember the story, don't you? So they put the baby in the basket, the little girl, Miriam, the sister sits on the, stands on the bank. The mother pushes the baby in the basket out into the, out into the river, and about that time, here comes Pharaoh's daughter who comes down to take a bath in the Nile River. 
And she comes down with all of her servants. And as the baby comes floating by, what does that young girl say? What does that young, young Pharaoh's daughter say? There's a baby. <laughs> There's a baby. Oh. And she pulled that baby aside and she says, sure enough, it's a baby. And you know, I, I, I love that. I, you know. And then the little girl, Miriam, the sister, what'd she say? She was on the bank and she said, excuse me. You need me to go fetch somebody to nurse that baby for you? You couldn't write a story like that, could you? And that, and that Pharaoh's daughter said, that's a great idea. You go get somebody to nurse that baby for me. So who did this young girl, Miriam, who did she go get? Some random. Some random. So, did she go get some random person to nurse that baby and take her? No, oh, she went to mama. So the, the scheme that they had laid out worked. And the mother comes over and nurses the baby. And the baby said, the Bible says it nurses the baby until it, I guess probably till it was weaned. And then she takes that baby and she gives it back to the Pharaoh's daughter. And that baby got a name that day because Moses means rescued up out of the water. And so the daughter names the baby. And now Moses is living in the palace with the Pharaoh. How do you think the living is in, in the palace? How do you think it is there, Bill? Luxurious. Absolutely. We got the best of everything. Meanwhile, the Israelites are out there doing slave labor, aren't they? <coughs> They're working on all the, everything they can manage to get. And here's Moses in the palace. And do you remember how long he will live in the palace? Forty years. Forty years. There's that number again, forty. The Lord uses that so many times, doesn't he? Did you ever notice that? Forty years, him living in the palace, getting the finest of education, learning all the tactical forces he can, all of the, the dynasty rules that they can bestow on him, all the etiquette rules, everything that you could possibly have, Moses has. Well, one day he ventures out of the palace and he goes down and he sees some of the, some of the Egyptians about how the taskmasters are treating the labor, the Hebrews. And I would imagine, I've got a feeling that Moses was probably you know, he was like you, Patrick. He was built up real strong, you know, and had big muscles. He stuttered. He, he did. Like this. Yeah. yeah, he stuttered. But anyway, he, got, he went into town, and when he saw the people there, they were roughhousing. They were abusing the Hebrew workers. And one thing got into a pushing contest, and what did Moses do? He stepped in and he killed the Egyptian that was forcing on the, on the, on the slave, on the Hebrew, on the Jewish. And did he go quickly to the Pharaoh and tell him what he had done? Did he go to the Israelites and to the to the chief priest and tell him what he had done. He hid that body in the sand. 
And then he's going to just completely forget it, wasn't he? He goes back into town the next day, and what happens? And they said, who are you to be a judge over us? Are you going to kill us like you did that other Egyptian just the other day? And he knew that the secret was out. And 40 years of luxury living has ended. And he will quickly run off. And he, and he will run off all the Israelites. They live over here in Goshen, the land of Goshen, over here by the Nile River in Egypt. Really a good part of, of Egypt very fertile, and he will run over here to Midian, what we call now Saudi Arabia, and he'll be in the desert, Midian, and so he's on the run, and he was 40 years old in the, in the palace, just curious, can you figure out how long he will spend in the wilderness? <laughs> 40, I guess 40 years. 40 years. 40 more years. So he will, his life will move to a different stand. So everything that he had accomplished in the palace now, he's living, now he's, he's over in Midian. And he is no more than left. And he is over in Midian. And there are some women bringing water up to feed their flocks. Now, I would imagine they were getting kind of abused by these other shepherds that were, were chasing these girls around. The, the priest there, he had seven daughters, and uh, Jethro was their father, and, and the girls were trying to, uh, trying to water the sheep, and they won't let them, and you know, and he, he, well, Moses stepped in, and I think with all of his talents, probably all of his skills that he had learned in the palace, he quickly, he quickly sent them packing. He got rid of those, those shepherds. Well, he ends up going home to, to, with the girls, and later on he will be given a hand in marriage to uh, one of those daughters, and her name will be Zipporah. And yes, they live over in Saudi Arabia, and whether you whether you know it or not, but Moses has a baby, has a son over in Midian, Gershom, and he will live over there for forty years, and he works now for his father-in-law, and he tends the, she tends the goats and the sheep, and he takes care, of, he's really now a farmer. What I found out interesting in that is that he may be 80 years old, but the Lord already had a plan for him, didn't he? Think about it. He gave you 40 years of knowing about the Egyptian rules, laws, government, the building, the temples, everything involved, and then he spent 40 years over in Midian, which is over there around Mount Sinai, who, where he will receive the, uh, the Ten Commandments later on in his ministry. He knew the lay of the land. He knew everything about that side, it was so that when he gets into a leading of the people, he already knows past experiences there. Isn't it good how the Lord works us out? Sometimes we've got plans out there that we can't even see how the Lord is preparing us, can we? You been there? You see it? It doesn't come out until you get older and you look back on yourself and you say, gosh, the Lord was leading me all along, wasn't He? Yes, He has a plan for you. He has a plan for me. Sometimes we don't recognize it. Sometimes we fight against it. Sometimes we buck the system. All the time, 
knowing that we need to remember to stay on humble knees and remember that the Lord is leading us. We don't, we don't see it right then, but as we get, why did we end up living in the Metroplex? Why did we do this? Why did we do that? And then later on you see different outcomes in your life about why things are, why things happen. We didn't understand it at the time, but the Lord lays that out for us. Moses, he's over in the desert. I imagine he's getting close to 80 years old. He's up on the mountain. He sees a bush burning. It burns, but it's not consumed. It's a burning bush. He sees it. Well, I'm just going to stay here and watch that. And then he hears a voice. The Lord talking to him. The Lord talking to him. He tells him, you need to take off your shoes. Take off your sandals. You're standing on holy ground right here. And the Lord will tell him that I have called you. You didn't understand it, but now you know the lay of the land, and you are going to be the one to leave the Egypt, the Israelites out of Egypt. Well, let me ask you something here, Ken. Let me pick on you a little while. When he was, when he went to him and he saw him, he said, "You're going to lead me, lead my people out." Did he say, "I've been waiting on the opportunity. <laughs> Finally, my day has come." He did not say that. Have you ever been there? And the Lord asked you to do something, and you said, I can't do that. Why did you pick me? Ba 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 And I imagine that he did. The Bible says he, his tongue was clumsy. He, he, he had a clumsy tongue. He, he couldn't speak well. But probably, you know, singing and... You know, ever notice how Mel Tillis, he can't, he has a hard time speaking, but when he starts to sing, yeah. it's a whole different world. So, and then that's the way it will be later on, where he will g grab the bull by the horns and he will be in control as we get into the story. That bush is burning, and the Lord is taking to him, and he is mumbling, and he's got his face down. He won't even lift his face up to look at the Lord. He is, and he keeps saying, I want you to lead my people out of Egypt. I have heard their cries. I, I hear their prayers, and you are going to lead the people. <laughs> Who, me? Huh? I know that you are a great man and how you're going to do that. I want you to know that is not the way it was with Moses. He went kicking and screaming, and, and for the next, well, over two chapters there, he will find excuses about why he shouldn't do it. Well, what, what if I go to lead the people, and, and they don't recognize me, and they, and, they, and they make fun of me? What am I going to do then? Tom? What am I going to do? You'll show me. Lord told him, said, the Lord told him, said, I'm going to be right there with you. Well, what if I get real close to them and they won't even listen to me, David? What am I going to do to them? And he said, you tell them that I am that I am. They'll understand that. And the leaders, the Jewish leaders will understand who, when you say that to them. Yeah, but what if I don't have sufficient words to do it? What if I don't look the part, Russ? I don't look like a leader. What if I don't do that, Janet? And, and what am I going to do with Zipporah? My wife and my boy here. What am I, what am I going to do with the kids? What am I going to do? Can't you get somebody else to do this? You been there? I don't think I am qualified for that. 
all the excuses, the same kind of excuses that me and you so frequently use, don't we? I don't think I can do it. I'm going to be right there with you. Finally, he got down to it. He said, you know, I hate to be that way, but I'm going to, I'm going to say no. <laughs> and then the Lord told him, he said, well, you, you've got a brother, don't you? You know your brother Aaron? And he speaks real well, doesn't he? In fact, he's just smooth as it comes, isn't he? Well, I'll tell you what, I will use your brother, and he will do the talking for you, and you will do the you will you will go out and you'll be the leader, but he'll be your he'll be your voice. Well, I don't know. I don't know. He said, I'll tell you what, I've even got, I've got Aaron coming this way. He's going to meet you in just a little bit. He's going to be with you here. Y'all get, y'all have a chance to talk it over. Now, no telling where Aaron was, but the Lord has already got him coming this way. Well, I'm not sure. And that's the way that Moses will really end the day. So, Every now and then when that feeling runs through you about you are reluctant to take on some responsibility, I want you to remember old Moses. Moses was the same way. Was the same way. But praise the Lord, he will soon change. Well, I had grand in great intentions to get all the way into some of the plagues today, <laughs> but we're not going to get that far. It would be another... Other, Janet was right. Janet told me, he said, you're way, picking off way too more, more than you can chew. <laughs> I need to listen more to her, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Joy, come on up here. We'll get started again next week. Okay? Really? Y'all come back now. Yeah. Okay. That was a good lesson. <laughs> I was sitting there feeling guilty, though, because I'm like, yeah, I've done it more than once, <laughs> several times, just yeah. this week, probably. <laughs> it just doesn't take long. Okay, we've got some praises this morning. We've got quite a few. John Bledsoe got good news. He's not even going to have to take chemo. I, don't, I mean, uh, radiation, I don't think. He's, his was very good news. Linda Turbin's doing better. Uh-huh. Uh, Charlie Clonch had a little procedure done this week, and he's here this morning, so that's great. Sure. Danny Young is out of the hospital and just change of medication for him, so he's doing good. Belly Reinhardt's son is doing good after his, his procedure to remove a toe. Um, Linda Dillard I talked to this week, and she's doing better. She appreciates the prayers. Um, and I was going to talk to Vera or find out about Vera this morning, and she's here. <laughs> So she's doing good, and she asked if we had just a little bit of time on our prayer list. Her granddaughter, great-granddaughter, and her husband, do I have that right, are coming in from Australia to spend two weeks with her. So she said if we could pray for safe travels and for her during the two weeks with lots of folks in her house. Okay, so that's good. Now we've got some prayer needs this morning. Um, Jed, the Vaden's grandson, has decided not to stay in hospice. He's back home now. So that's good. He wanted to come home. Uh, Ann Hamilton, I do not have a report on, but last I talked to her, she wasn't doing too well. So we need to keep her in our prayers. Um, Randy Dixon did not go to the nurse, to the rehab center. He, they weren't able to get the paperwork worked out. So Randy is still home. So we need to pray for him and Betty. He's doing well physically, yeah, doing better. Got good reports on that. Um, Dina Murphy's cousin in Denver, she's in Denver with her cousin right now, I think. Uh, she's got, she's in hospital. Talked to Gladys Williams this week. Gladys has been fighting another UTI. And Dennis is gonna have to have a pacemaker done and they don't know which day yet. They're just waiting on the, the thing to get set up. 
Uh, Margaret Malone called last night. Jerry has shingles and vertigo. And she's not feeling well and is having some tests run. So we need to keep them in our... And then Tim Secre told me this morning he also is going to have a pacemaker yeah. put in this Wednesday in Dallas. That's right. So we have a long list. Did I miss anything? There's so many. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning so grateful in our hearts for everything you do to us, the blessings you give us each day. Thank you for the rain this week. Uh, thank you for the praises, the folks that are healing this week and doing so much better. And then we have a long list of folks that we've mentioned, Lord, that just need your your healing hand upon them and your your grace and your strength and peace with whatever they're dealing with. We have folks that we've named, and we also all have other people in our hearts that we know need your help this week, especially, Lord. We pray that as we go through the week that you will just whisper in our ear and help us to know what we need to do to reach out on your name to help folks in any way that we can and that we will listen, not be like Moses and say, no, not me. We need to pick it up and do it, Lord, just because you told us to. We ask these things in thy precious name. Amen. Amen.